last day of our tag and release fishing trip. Yesterday was a very, very, very tough day. The water was very big. There was a lot of what we call long being here in the Cape where the water pulls back and pushes up very high. Oh, it was just big, uh, five, six meters as well, it's easy. Yeah, um, and yeah, the fishing was very bad. But just got one nice halyun of 50 centimeters, got another one of about 40 centimeters, and a lot of small halyun. How was your day, Ria? Yeah? It was quiet, eh? the, the shark guys didn't do well at all. So, uh, but yeah, a couple of good recaptures came out yesterday. I think there was a Bellman also tagged and some. Uh, Bronze beam also takes, so yeah, a bit of everything in the water still, but yeah, let's uh, hope the swell drops down a bit today. Yeah. It's a little bit big, but yeah, let's see what happens. Huh? Today I'm on big fish, so hopefully we can find a spot, doesn't look <laughs> too good, but mm -mm. find a spot <laughs> where we can get some, you know, we're going to be targeting cop today, stem runs, and yeah, and there might be some alpha, I think the chance of alpha is There was some alpha in the water, so we still felt them as well, so yeah, but let's see what happens. But once again, we want to thank Jock. Yakita, our retail partner down in Cape Town. Guys, go and visit their shop and also their online store. They've got a brand new online store and you will definitely get some great deals there. And also Agio Bait. The bait supplied by them is really, really good. Um, you know, I've been fishing, I've been using their bait for quite a few years now. Best IQF sods that you can get in the Western Cape great muscle great um chocker so please go and have a look at their bait and guys can't stress how much how important bait is for any good fishing trip that is most probably the number one thing to have proper bait with you 100 mm, percent. okay let's see what happens today yeah okay thanks Matt, you must have seen footage of oh, him God. so far. Um, we caught that nice elf the other day. What was the size of that? Um, the elf was 740. And he is making a bloodworm bait here with a piece of chaka. This guy is brilliant with baits. One of the best natural anglers in the Western Cape. Rock and serve and anything else. He's doing a little all round bait. Nice little for movement in the water. That's it. Okay, let's see if that boat boat produce. Go for it, Matt. I'm gonna show you guys a bloodworm bait. This is an easy bait, a quick easy bloodworm bait. You don't have a time to thread the bloodworm through the hook. Um, what I normally do is I take a blood womb and cut it in, uh, in two, um, the head section and the tail section and then use bo both. Uh, because of the restriction on five blood worms per person, um, I can, this way I can get 10 day, uh, baits out per day. I always put a little bit of foam just to give it a better grip and maybe a little bit of um, head movement in the water. Then what I do is I cut the bloodworm open, push the hook through, just cut it open. I leave a centimeter at the back and about two, three centimeters in the front. Push the hook through and then put the hook through 
at the head of the blood worm and then just use elastic cotton yeah, just a couple of times around the hook both sides to keep the hook in place and nice and proud and then there's the two fullers of the blood worm and then just go up the line with the blood worm I like to brine my blood worm I'll, in the future I'll show you guys in the clip how to do that keeps the bait nice and fresh for a long time so you can go and get your collect your blood worm before the time and there it is nice blood worm bait for a steam bra hopefully one of the other anglers Jason has just got a looks like a nice we threw a chocolate bait so let's see what he's got on Alright guys, quickly showing you again how nice and efficient that stay lock, this uh, stay lock snap from Mustard is. I decided to change over from the chokka bait. There's a lot of small pickers eating the chokka. Take the one tray off. Get the tray is ready prepared. And there I'm ready to go. So this is the trace, a short sinker line because of fishing for steambras and there's quite a lot of reef out there and the blood will bait. There's the first cop for the morning. 67 centimeters. Hope we get some. Okay guys, um, this is just a chokka and a bloodworm combo. Um, what I do, I fish with a dingle dangle. So it's quite difficult to get the um, bloodworm on the dingle dangle. So what I do is I take a pair of surgical scissors and um, I cut my bloodworm open. And what I do, I 
take my chocker mallet and I actually hit the inside of the of the blood worm that just releases a bit more flavors. Okay, and then my chocker as per normal. And then Sixo Gamagatsu for the biting trace and a dingle dangle. I'll put my chocker on first. Wrap it around the dingle dangle. Just like this. A couple of times around before I put the blood worm on. And then I make sure my blood worm is trimmed nicely. It looks neat. Cut the four corners off at an angle. It just makes your presentation so much nicer. And then I'll put the inside of the blood worm on the out outside. Is that for some extra smell in the water? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I, I use the chocker mallet as well. Just because it's quite tough, the blood worm's quite tough. And inside that thick flesh, there's a lot of smells in there as well. I just wrap it and mold it as I go along. Just like that. I get to the bottom with the hookies, to the top rather. I'll just tie it, tie it tightly so that it doesn't shift around too much on the hook. A couple of times around the hook. Are you well. clipping this bait? Yes, definitely. I'll show you now in a second. Very nice picking bait here. Okay. And then I'll use my grab sinker. And I'll clip my dingle dangle onto my sinker. And I should be able to cast that quite a distance. Nice picking bait. So let's see if we can get another one. Oh, it's a nice cop. Okay. Try to have a clean stretcher. Okay, Lisa just explained to me um, tagging the fish. Why do we tag the fish quite to the back of the fish? So we tag it a bit further back in Cape Town compared to Natal because our fish are in a high relief surf zone, so it's a really active pier where the water is calmer in, in Natal. So we try and make um, the tags a little bit flatter against the body so there's not so much water resistance, so it doesn't cause as, as much drag to the fish. You want it to not feel the tag and that you don't want it to be hindered by the tag. So we try and tag a little bit more backwards than the people in Natal. was declared in 1988 and we started 
1984 by initially we were killing fish and looking at age structure and stuff like that and we started the tagging in 1987 so a year and 14 months a uh, year and four months before uh, the NPA was declared so we've got data from how it, the uh, fish were before uh, the reserve was declared and then we monitor the monitor the recovery right throughout the years and it's been going on since then and what's really interesting that we now see decadal trends in certain species of fish like a 20 year decadal trend in Kalyun and things like that and the, what, the reason we are monitoring the fish is we're using them as a proxy to look at the surf zone that surf zone is that first two, three hundred meters where boats can't come, nets can't come you can't really dive there, it's in the surge of the waves and that's why fishing um, is the way to monitor the largest predator in the surf zone, which is the fish. And we use that to look at the ecosystem. So if the fish are doing well, that ecosystem is doing well. So um, we are looking at the ecosystem health of the surf zone. And we're using fish as a proxy. And of course, the anglers love it because they have the opportunity to experience not just the marine protected area, fishing in a marine protected area but see the benefits of having a marine protected area where the fish get, gets a chance to grow, expand, breed and then spill over to the outside areas so that there is still fish outside the MPA. So due to MPAs there is still fish outside MPAs and that's what makes it so amazing. Quite interesting Lisa said to me this morning um, you know a lot of species there wouldn't have been, if any, a lot of fish outside this year, like Kalyun is one of the, yeah. the fish. Yeah, Kalyun is our national fish and you know, if this particular marine protected area didn't exist, Kalyun probably wouldn't have been there anymore. Um, it is, it was, it's so heavily fished because it's the most popular fish, that's why it's our national fish. Um, and people don't stick to bag and size limits. Kalyun breed for the first time at 34 centimeters and the legal size is 35 centimeters. So what we are saying is just give it one chance to breed then you can catch it. But what, the moment you keep an undersized fish, of course you're saying you're not even keeping giving it a chance to breed. And if you don't stick to bag limits, then you're really messing up with the numbers. I mean, we worked out that it actually to keep the population just the way it is at the moment guys must take can only take up 1.8 kalyun so we made the bag limit two so actually two is almost a bit too much you should actually only take out one kalyun at a time okay thank you very much lisa and good luck with this project yes thank you very much Listening to what Liesl says, us as anglers sometimes are guilty of being short-sighted and very selfish in many cases. Looking at the bigger picture, every little thing we do will influence our whole ecosystem. And as anglers, we should always be more responsible than not for the sake of our sport as well as our environment. Areas like these look after our halyun, cop and many other species that forms part of the whole cycle. So guys, to every angler out there, we all have it in us to look after our environment. This is what I love about the Southern Eastern Cape and that whole Western Cape area. The odd smooth out or spotted gully is always welcome. They are ferocious fighters and always enjoyable catch. Now even though you might be on the edible team and targeting edible fish, several other species might pick you up. The hound sharks do not have teeth that will bite you off. More a serrated kind of sandpaper. The very important thing with circle hook is don't strike and 
wait for the fish to take drag. This fish pulled me down to 99%. It still hasn't taken committed it fully, so you have to wait for the fish to take drag, otherwise you're not going to be able to see the circle hook. And if you want to release these fish, make sure when handling them that your hands are always wet. As dry hands will remove the protective slime layer on the fish and can cause bacterial infection. Now I'm sure a lot of anglers will agree with me when I say that we've got a most amazing coastline. And even though us as anglers over many years has put a lot of pressure on our fish, there is still some really great catches. Thanks to initiatives like this and responsible anglers. South Africa, definitely one of the most amazing coastlines imaginable. The diversity from our west coast right through to Cozy Bay is really spectacular. Now well done to Liesel and the team and thank you for inviting ASFN on this very important project. It was a real privilege bringing you guys this material of what MPAs are and what they mean for us as anglers. Hi everyone, an awesome week fishing, awesome four days fishing and the work is coming to an end now. I think I might have one more cast. just would like to thank our Tackle retail partner down here in Cape Town, Yakita of Bay to Tackle, Jock, Kirby, Ron and the boys, thank you for all your support. And also thank you Bait for brilliant baits that I've been fishing with during the week. It's a nice fish on the bait. And yeah, just a uh, quick note on some of the tackle that I've been fishing with. Uh, the guys at Adrenaline for the rods to try out. I told them I'm looking for Nice rod to fish for Khalyun Cracker, those things on Small Fish Day. And that K Light rod is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant rod. I was so impressed with that rod, especially pulling that 54 centimeter Khalyun and that 64 centimeter Muscle Cracker. That rod has got so much backbone. Um, I fish with the 12 foot, they've also got a 30 foot that I've got here, but myself. Adrenaline as well. Also, with the footage of what we saw me catch the cop now, you can see it's so got a lot of bad backbone. Of course, brilliantly and a nice rod. Personal preference, I would like a smaller, shorter bat section. I don't prefer the long bat section, but I think this rod, especially this blank, has got a lot of potential. I was also fishing with the new nine strand pearl line, line, uh, line on the the bricks for Palyun. Brilliant, brilliant line. I would love to fish with it some more to give you an opinion on the, the surf fishing side of it, but a very, very nice um, line from them. Thank you for all your support and we'll be back soon in Cape Town with some more fishing. Thank you for watching ASFN and thank you for everybody that subscribed already. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and hit that bell notification button to be notified every time we upload a video. Also like this video as that helps us a lot. Thanks again for watching and see you soon.